Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Sir Steven and for today, we will be discussing the nervous system as a part of your medical histology laboratory. Here, we will be dividing the different portions of the nervous system into the peripheral nervous system, central nervous system, the meninges, and the choroid plexus. Let's start. And for the peripheral nervous system, this is the macroscopic anatomy. We have your nerve trunks, which is glistening grayish white cords. We have 12 cranial nerves and 31 spinal nerves. The spinal nerves connect to the spinal cord via two roots. We have the anterior, or we call it the efferent or the motor. And we also have the posterior, we have the or the afferent or sensory. Your sensory cell bodies in posterior, or we call it the dorsal root ganglion, and you have motor cell bodies in your spinal cord, anterior horn, and your brainstem nuclei. Distally spinal nerves will divide your anterior and your posterior rami. These are supplying the anterior and the posterior parts of your body. The anterior rami supplying the limbs from the nerve plexuses and the upper for the cervical, brachial, the lower, and lumbar for sac and sacral. And for the macro microscopic anatomy, we have the neuron or the ganglion cell as the basic anatomic or functional unit, which is highly specialized with complex morphology. We have also pericardion, or we call it the soma, your nasal substance, your neurofibrils, your dendrites, and your axons. We have types of neurons, and they are basically divided into different um, categories. We have your base on axon or dendrite configuration or the polarity. We have the multipolar consisting of several branching dendrites. We have one axon. We have also unipolar. We call it pseudo unipolar. These are single T-shaped process that branches into your axon or dendrites. And this is very rare in ganglia. We have also bipolar or single dendrite and single axon at the opposite poles of the spindle shaped soma, which is very rare in some areas of your retina and your cochlea. We have also base and axon. Um, these are Golgi types. Type 1 are extensive dendrites, long axon forms nerve. Type 2, we have short axons, and these are the interneurons in your central nervous system pathways. We have also base and stimulus direction, motor versus the sensory. The motor is controlling the effector organs, such as your muscle and your glands. And we have your sensory, which is receiving the stimuli from your environment. Next is the non-neuronal satellite cells. We have your squan cells. We have your perineural cells. We have your endoneural capillaries from your vasa nervorum. We have also connective tissue sheaths. We have the endoneurium, which is very delicate connective tissue. Your perineurium, which is multi-layered concentric cells. We have also your epineurium, uh, made up of dense fibrous connective tissue and um, enveloping your main nerve trunk and it's consisting of several bundles it merges also with your surrounding adipose tissue and it's continuous with your dura matter and with the organization of your peripheral nervous system the nerve fiber is a long process of neuron usually the axon which um, they are also divided or grouped into fascicles by connective tissue sheets we have your fibers that are myelinated or unmyelinated. The nodes of Ranvier, uh, these are the, job, the, the junctions or the gaps in your myelination. Your synapses, which are specialized membranous contact when made up of neurons. The ganglion at the same time is a collection of neuron cell bodies, glial cells. It can be autonomic or sensory. On your left is the axon or the anatomy of your peripheral nerve. Your axon here is in the black bold arrow, which is surrounded by myelin producing squan cells. The myelin producing squan cells is in the, is in the single black arrow, straight arrow, and covered by your endoneurium, which is the curved black arrow. We have also multiple axons that are grouped into the fascicles, it's in a white bold arrow. And each are covered with perineurium in um, the black single arrow. We have several fascicles together that are bound by your epineurium in curved blue arrow. 
that forms the main nerve trunk. On your right, this is a high power view of a peripheral nerve cross section that shows you individual fibers, the axons in blue straight arrow in parallel arrays, which are surrounded by your endoneurium and a curved black arrow and bundled into fascicles covered by perineurium in bold black arrow. The next figure is on your left. Each of these main nerve trunk is enveloped by your epineurium in a bold black arrow, the outer layer of dense fibrous connective tissue that also merges with your surrounding fibroadipose tissue in single black arrow. The blood vessels here in curved blue arrow in, is the vasa nervorum, which passing through the epineurium to reach the nerves. Peripheral nerves are composed of multiple bundles or fascicles in a single black arrow and each are enclosed by the perineurium in blue bold arrow on your right. The peripheral nerve axons on your left are red on trichomes, trichrome stain and the connective tissue is blue green. The perineurium in blue single arrow is composed of multiple concentric layers of flattened cells and collagen surrounding each bundle or fascicle. On your right, the individual nerve fibers will stain red in a single black arrow and the endoneurium in bold black arrow is blue-green. The endoneurium, again on your right, is composed of satellite cells and fine connective tissue that extends around and between each the individual nerve fiber. On your left is a section from the dorsal root ganglion, that's the T10 level that shows the cluster of neuronal cell bodies in single black arrow. The surrounding smaller darker nuclei which is in bold, bold, uh, bla blue bold arrow belong to your satellite cells. The longitudinal bundles of your nerve fibers in curved black arrow is belonging to the spinal nerve associated with this ganglion. On your right, is a high power view shows a large spherical pericaria in a single black arrow with large pale centrally located nuclei in bold black arrow and a prominent nucleoli in curved black arrow brown blue nisal substance in a bold blue arrow can be seen also in your cytoplasm on your left is the perineurium it's um, Around this single small nerve fascicle, which is composed of collagen and spindle shaped perineural cells. The empty space in the curved black arrow is due to the fixation artifact and should not be mistaken for atrophy. The nuclei of uh, the non neuronal satellite cells in a bold black arrow in the endoneurium mostly belong to your squan cells. On your right, a trichome. Stained section of a nerve fascicle shows the actions in the myelin sheets in red. These are noted in single black arrow and a delicate connective tissue of endoneurium in blue, which is in bold black arrow. Your left is your immunohistochemical stain for the neurofilament protein that shows large myelinated axons in a single black arrow that are strongly positive. The variable diameters for the staining axons or of the staining axons will reflect the different amounts of the myelin surrounding each nerve fibers or the axon. Unmyelinated axons are very narrow and difficult to detect. On your right is the myelin stains dark blue in this toluidine blue stained plastic section. It's a mixture of large in a single black arrow and small diameter, bold black arrow, myelinated nerve fibers that can be seen here. On your left is a toluidine blue longitudinal section, shows the nodes of Ranvier in single blue arrow, which is seen as the gaps in myelination. The internodal segment between the myelinated by a single swan cell is shown here. On your right, luxol fast blue stains, myelin in a 
single white arrow in blue cyan as seen here as large diameter accents in a bold white arrow which are stained black with your Biles Kosky stain. The small diameter accents in a curved white arrow are unmyelinated. This can identify demyelinating, remyelinating processes as shown you on as shown this figure on your right. On your left is a medium power neurofilament protein that stain shows a cross section of your peripheral nerve with strongly positive fascicles of your nerve fibers. The spaces in uh, single black arrow between the fascicles represents the perineurium. On your right, S100 protein shows the squan cells that staining positively or strongly positive in the endoneurium while surrounding nerve fibers in a single blue arrow are negative. On your left, accents here in a bold black arrow are surrounded by myelin sheets in a single blue arrow that are produced by your squan cells. Squan cell nuclei in a curved blue arrow and cytoplasm in a bold blue arrow with abundant endoplasmic reticulum are also seen. On your right, this section from the colon, a colon wall shows the or back or the myenteric plexus which is a collection of ganglion cells in a single black arrow in the enteric nervous system. Increased numbers of your lymphocytes in a blue bold arrow, as seen here, are abnormal, but the cause isn't always clear. On your left, the cross section from a peripheral nerve shows a squanoma in a, a single black arrow in the center of the nerve trunk which displaces a normal nerve fiber to the periphery. On your right is a neurofilament protein staining that shows a squanoma that doesn't stain, whereas the peripherally displaced normal nerve fibers in a bold blue arrow as well as the neighboring nerve in curved black arrow are both, both positive. Let's move forward with the central nervous system. The central nervous system and its macroscopic anatomy consisting of the brain, um, the supratentorial components, which, is, which are over the tentorium cerebelli, the cerebrum, the cerebral cortex, the subcortical white matter, the fissures, the sulci, separate gyri or lobes. We have the deep basal ganglia nuclei, which is consisting of the caudate, putamen, globus pallidus, your diencephalon, the thalamus, and the hypothalamus. We have also the infratentorial components, which are the posterior fossa contents. We have the cerebellum, the cerebellar cortex, the brainstem, and also the ventricular system as a part of your brain. These are the hollow chambers or connections that contains, uh, containing your cerebrospinal fluid and also with your spinal cord. This is uh, central H-shaped gray matter horns. There are also surrounding white matter fiber bundles, the funiculi, and the central canal, which are ependyma lined neural tube remnants. And the macroscopic anatomy should be remembered as we go further with this section of your nervous system. The microscopic anatomy is um, the gray matter is rich in neuronal and glial cell bodies. We have your neuron or the nerve cell as the anatomical functional unit. The cell body, uh, the pericardion, is a spherical, ovoid, and orangul orangular. Say, uh, the sizes is a 5 to 10 micrometers to 50 to 100 micrometers. The nasal substance are the granular basophilic areas, which are typically found in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The axons are a single long process that conducts downstream. We have also short uh, interneurons to very long, the upper motor axons as part of that. Dendrites are multiple short processes that receive stimuli. Neuropil is hypocellular, finely fibrillar meshwork of unmyelinated neuronal and astrocytic cell processes. We have the white matter, which are compact bundles of tracts or fascicles of 
myelinated, myelinated axons and supporting oligodendrocytes. You have also astrocytes that are most common that outnumber the neurons. They have the ratio of at least 10 is to 1. We have different types of astrocytes, the protoplasmic, the fibrous, and round oval nuclei. Next is your oligodendroglia, or we call it the oligodendrocytes. These are small round nucleus around 8 micrometers and they have dense chromatin. A perinuclear halo as a part of uh, its characteristic and they accumulate around the neurons. We call it the neuronal satellite satellitosis. They have also pigmented cathical aminergic neurons, the substantia nigra, the locus corellus, these are cytoplasmic neuromelanin. We have also microglia, which are mesoderm derived resident macrophage. We have ependyma, which are epithelioid cuboidal or low columnar cells, and of different types the lined ventricular system, the pale vesiculated nucleus on your abluminal side, and the ciliated or the microvillous border on the ventricular side. And we have also considerations and uh, variations, age related. Um, some of the neurons will accumulate substances with increasing age, like yellow-brown intracytoplasmic lipofusion, like neurofibrillary larry tangles, plaques, herano bodies, marinesco bodies, the bright red intranuclear inclusions. We have also uh, astrocytes that accumulate in the corpora amylaceae in processes for age-related. And that's it. Now in your left is the anterior view of the coronal head section which shows the sylvian fissure or the lateral sulcus in a bold white arrow separating the temporal, the single white arrow from the frontal curved white lobe, arrow lobes. These are also seen in the paired lateral ventricles in a black bold arrow with deep nuclei of the basal ganglia in curved blue arrow and pons in a single black arrow. On your on your right is inferior view of showing you the two cerebellar hemispheres. These are the noted in a white bold arrow and the beginning of the spinal cord, the single white arrow, the pons in a curved white arrow and the optic chiasm in a curved black arrow. The longitudinal cerebral fissure in a uh, single black arrow which separates the left from the right cerebral hemispheres here at the level of the frontal lobes. This is the anterior view of the coronal head section that shows the sylvian fissure or the lateral sulcus. This is um, the left portion. The lateral sul the sulcus is uh, noted as the white bold arrow separating the temporal, the single white arrow from the frontal, the curved white arrow lobes. Also seen are the par paired of lateral ventricles in a bold black arrow and deep nuclei of basal ganglia in a curved blue arrow in the pons, which is in a single black arrow. On your right is the H and E showing you the six layers of the cerebral cortex between the pia matter on top and the subcortical white matter on your bottom of the bottom portion left molecular or the curve this molecular or curved black arrow external granular curved blue arrow external pyramidal bold black arrow internal granular bold blue arrow internal pyramidal single black arrow and the polymorphic or the multiform single blue arrow On your left is the cellular components of the cerebral cortex and all of the CNS, including the neurons in a single white arrow, astrocytes, a curved black arrow, oligodendrocytes, bold black arrow, and the microglia, which is the bold blue arrow. On your right is the view that's showing you the three, three layers of the cerebellar cortex between the surface pia matter in a single black arrow and the white matter uh, curved black arrow of the cerebellar medulla. 
outer hypocellular molecular layer in a bold black arrow, middle central Purkinje cell layer in a single blue arrow, and the inner or deep hypercellular granular layer in a bold blue arrow. These are the small cells of the latter are difficult to recognize histologically as classic neurons. On your left is the intermediate lamina of the cerebellar cortex consisting of a single cell layer of Purkinje cells in a curved black arrow setting between the outer relatively hypocellular molecular layer in a curved black arrow and the inner or densely populated granular la cell layer in a single blue arrow. On your right is the Purkinje cells in the cerebellar cortex that are composed of large, which is like 50 micrometers, nerve cell body, or the pericarion in bold black arrow. They have a prominent vesicular nucleus, a granular basophilic or nasal, sub nasal bodies or substance in a single blue arrow, and a dendritic arbor in a curved black arrow that extends deep into the molecular layer. On your left is a cross section of the cervical spinal cord showing you large anterior or ventral horns in a single white arrow of the gray matter containing motor neurons that innervate upper extremities. The posterior or dorsal horns in a bold blue black arrow get sensory input from your dorsal root ganglia and the funiculi of the white matter fibers in a curved black arrow are thickest here. They have large number of ascending and descending tracts. On your right, the thoracic cord has a smaller anterior or posterior horns but also contains the lateral horns in single black arrow of the intermediolateral cell column. We call it the sympathetic autonomic neurons. Now is the lumbosacral spinal cord on your left has a very large anterior or ventral gray matter horns in a single white arrow that houses the motor neurons supplying the lower extremities. The white matter tracks in a bold black arrow are thinner here as the smaller numbers of ascending tracks have joined. On your right, the central canal of the spinal cord is lined as is the ventricular system by your ciliated or cuboidal or columnar ependyma cells in a bold black arrow. The lumen in the curved blue arrow often ob uh, is obliterated in adults containing your CSF. The surrounding gray matter in a single black arrow is part of the gray commissure. On your left with the spinal cord, gray matter contains multiple neuronal cell bodies in a single blue arrow and nuclei of the various supporting glial cells in a bold black arrow. Amid the finely fibrillar background of the neuropale measure, the latter is composed of unmelanated, this is a negative in this luxal fast blue stain, neuritic and astrocytic cell processes. On your right, the luxal fast blue stain highlights the blue melanated axons of the neurons in the white matter of the cord and also with the CNS and the small dense round nuclei of oligodendrocytes in a single black arrow that produce this myelin sheath. On your left is a high power view of a Bilshawski silver stain that highlights the argeophilic or the silver positive long axonal processes in a single white arrow of the neurons in largely uniform white matter peppered by the nuclei of the myelinating oligodendroglia, which is in your bold blue arrow. On your right, a high power view of an immunohistochemical stain for the GFAP, highlighting the immunoreactive astrocytes with star-shaped cytoplasm with round pale nuclei and multiple processes. On your left is the synaptophysin, which is a widely used marker for neuronal differentiation. That is found in synaptic vesicles and thus highlights the nerve cell body in a bold blue arrow. The proximal dendrites of a large neuron in a punctate pattern. In this background, the neuropil is seen as the diffuse, finely granular staining 
in a single black arrow which indicates the synaptic contacts. On your right, pigmented cathecol aminergic neurons of the brainstem, which is substantia nigra in the midbrain, locus corellius in the pons, are containing the neuromelanin, which is seen as a coarse dark brown cytoplasmic granules in a single black arrow. The lipofuscin on your left in a bold black arrow is a pale yellow-brown cytoplasmic accumulation seen with age in neurons and they are often peripherally displaced as your nucleus and the organelles. On your right, bile shows key silver stain showing you a senile plaque in a single black arrow in this aging brain as an ill-defined round cluster of an extracellular granular material which is formed about of like abnormal neurites altering the smooth fibril fibrillarity of the background neuropil and causes nearby accents to disperse. The mature plaques are visible on H&E &E and acquire a central eosinophilic core that is positive for amyloid. Bring forward with the meninges. Meninges is consisting of a three separate layers of connective tissue uh, collective tissue membranes that envelope the central nervous system, the dura matter, arachnoid matter, the pia matter. The arachnoid and pia matter consti constitute the leptomeninges. We have also the microscopic anatomy consisting of dura matter, which is elastic and dense collagen fibers arranged in lamina. The arachnoid matter is consisting of two layers of mesothelial cells. The pia matter is a loose connective tissue with collagen and elastic fibers. With age-related variations, the dura can fuse with skull in older individuals. Non-specific calcifications of, of dura increase with age. The arachnoid matter and the granulations increase in size. They thicken with advancing age due to collagen deposition. We have also pitfalls in artifacts like arachnoiditis ossificans leptomeningeal melanocytes. These are the pitfalls for the meninges. Your meninges on your left is the coronal view showing you the brain and the cranial dura matter in a curved white arrow. The two layers, the outer and the inner of the dura matter, will separate to form the superior sagittal sinus in a bold white arrow. The inner dura layer joins the underlying arachnoid to form the falx cerebri in a single blue arrow. On your right, the dense fibrous dura matter in a single blue arrow overlies the delicate translucent arachnoid in a curved white arrow which is closely attached to it. Web-like connective tissue fibers in a bold white arrow which is formed about of arachnoid trabecula will join the arachnoid to the underlying pia matter. On your left, the dura matter is composed of dense fibrous connective tissue. The outer and inner layers are often fused and difficult to distinguish. Non-specific calcifications or the single black arrow can be seen, especially with increasing age. On your right, the superior sagittal sinus in a pulled white arrow is a venous channel formed by the separation of the outer or the curved black arrow, the parosteal and the inner which is the single white arrow, the meningeal dura layers. Arachnoid granulations in a curved blue arrow are the projections of the arachnoid covered CSF containing subarachnoid space into the blood field venous sinus. On your left is the subarachnoid space, this, which is a potential space found below the arachnoid membrane, the curved black arrow, and occupied by CSF. The superficial cerebral vessels in a single blue arrow and arachnoid trabecula in a bold black arrow, which is a connective tissue fibers between the arachnoid and the underlying pia. On your right is the low power view of illustrating the relationships between the arachnoid, the single black arrow which is thin layer of mesothelial cells, the subarachnoid space in a curved black arrow, uh, sorry, in the bold black arrow, in the pia matter in a curved blue arrow, the delicate membrane covering the brain adhering to your gyri and your sulci. We have the pia matter. On your left 
is a delicate membrane, a curved black arrow that coats the brain surface in a bold black arrow as well as penetrating cerebral vessels in a single blue arrow. The potential space between the pia mater and the CNS surface is called the sub-PL space. On your right, arachnoid cysts are usually congenital and asymptomatic. The arachnoid is replaced by dense fibrosis in a single black arrow, but the characteristic overlying single cell layer of your mesothelium, the curved bl blue arrow, is still visible. Now we move forward with the last portion, which is the choroid plexus. In macroscopic anatomy, it is a specialized vascular organ in the ventricles of your CNS. It is also the site of CSF production. Locations, lateral ventricles, roof of the third and fourth ventricles, and also the cerebellopontid angle cisterns in your subarachnoid space. In macroscopic anatomy, they have invaginated pia mater folds, which are also called as the vascular leptomeninges. These are papillary frond-like processes that project into the ventricles. They contain also loose tissue core containing collagen dil dilated blood vessels and small nest of me meningothelial arachnoid cells. They are also covered by a single layer or of uh, cuboidal low columnar cells, the modified ependyma cells that has a larger hobnail surface greatly increased surface area due to villi or the microvilli and also they have all the tight intermediate junctions as forming the blood CSF barrier. They have also considerations in age related mineral salt deposition in the connective tissue cores seen with increasing age accounts for radio density the cytoplasmic vacuoles or the cystic santomatose gray uh, changes common in incidental finding with increasing age, choroid plexus cyst, common often in fetuses and some associated with the aneuploidy such as trisomy 18 and 21. This graphic shows the sites of the choroid plexus in the brain including the roof of the third in a single blue arrow and fourth bold black arrow ventricles. On your left is the front-like processes, a low power view demonstrating the, uh, the popular portion of this area. The papillary area architecture on your left is um, an architecture of the choroid plexus characterized by front-like processes of the vascular leptomeningeal tissue that project into the ventricular lumen. On your right, the course of the loose connective tissue and the dilated blood vessels in a bold blue arrow in the choroid plexus are covered by a single cell layer of modified ependyma cells, which is in a single black arrow. On your left is a high power view of showing you the choroid plexus in a bold black arrow and the ependyma cells in a black single arrow covering the surface of the ventricle wall in a curved blue arrow in contrast to the ependyma cells from which they are derived and with which they are continuous, the choroid epithelial cells are larger with a more obnailed or tombstone appearance. On your right, the calcifications in a single black arrow within the connective tissue cores of a choroid plexus may assume a laminated or concentric appearance. We call it the psamoma bodies. On your left is a choroid plexus cyst that are common benign lesion often seen in fetuses. The vascular connective tissue fronts of the choroid plexus in a blue single arrow can be seen surrounding the lumen of the cyst, which is in a bold black arrow. On your right, this is a photograph of a cystic centolomatous grains uh, changes showing a cystic lumen in a single black arrow filled with centoma cells, which are the foamy macrophages with a curved black a uh, curved blue arrow and also surrounded by attenuated choroid epithelial cells in a bold black arrow. This is a common incidental finding seen with older age, but it has no specific pathologic significance. And that's it for today. That's the nervous system and the medical histology of the different portions, the peripheral nervous system. We also have the central nervous system 
your meninges and your cord plexus. Thank you so much for watching and up next is the head and neck of your medical histology laboratory.